Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to create an Active Directory site, an Active Directory site link, and then also move domain controllers into the new site, and then we're going to finally view that and see that the changes have been made. So if I look to begin with in Active Directory Sites and Services OK, so you can see here in the tool that we've got the default first site name This is where the domain controllers will sit if there hasn't been any other configuration done. This is the default option. And then up here on the InterSite Transports, we can see that there's the default IP site link already in place. So the goal in this exercise is to create a new site and then a new site link. Okay, so I'm going to get started now. So first of all, we want to see what we've got already. So get AD replication site. Okay, and that then returns, you can just see that it's got simply got the default first site name in there. Okay, so we need to verify as well. the domain controllers we've got there. OK, so this will show you that I've got DC1, DC2, DC12 and Server2. Gonna, we're going to ignore these last two for the purposes of this exercise and just concentrate on DC1, DC2. So now we can actually create the site, the new site. This, for example, could be a different branch, so I'm going to call mine branch 2. So we do AD new AD replication site, and I'm going to call that branch 2. Verify that with the get. AD replication site. And there you can see now on this one the same command we used earlier, it now shows you the default one and the fact that you've got branch 2 on there. So now that we've got the second site created branch 2 we need to create the new replication link. So we do new AD replication site link this time and I'm going to call mine hub to branch 2 and this site included is going to be the default first site name 
so that's where they're created by default and then we're going to add our branch to to that and then put at the end here other attributes at Okay, so that's created the new link and then we can set the options with the set AD replication site link commandlet So set AD replication site link. Hub to branch two. And I'm going to put in a default cost of a hundred. and a replication frequency in minutes for the purposes of this test. OK, so now we have the new site, branch 2, and we also have the new AD replication site link of hub to branch 2. So what I'm going to do now is move my second domain controller DC2 into the new site so in effect you would have one domain controller DC1 at the hub and then you would have the second one at the second site which is called branch 2 so if I do get AD domain controller dc2 and my domain name is called corp.lan you would obviously have to change that depending on whichever one yours was so we get the domain controller dc2 then we're going to pipe that into move ad directory server and then we do the option of the site being branch 2 and now if we do get ad domain controller like we did before and filter it filter on host name and site you can now see that DC1, my original one, is still at the default first site name. And then DC2 is now at branch 2. So we can verify these results by heading back over to the Active Directory Sites and Services. So if I hit refresh... So you can now see straight away that we've got the second site in there branch 2 if we expand that out the default one as well you can see that the domain controller DC2 has now moved from the default first site name site into the second branch there and if we now look at the transports as well 
we can now see that there is the site link hub to branch to and if I double click that you can see there that branch to and default first site name are included in this link and the cost is a hundred and the replication minutes is 15 as we set before in PowerShell.